What's up, y'all? This be your boy Scotty yet again, and this is my review on the um the haves and the have nots. This is the second season, um episode one. I think this is the second season, or this is still like the first season, but it's continuing on. I don't know how it goes, but I'm just gonna say this is the second season, episode one of the haves and the have nots. Now, um. This show was one of my favorites, and it, this show and Being Mary Jane is giving me what Scandal wasn't giving me. That's all I'm saying. Um, I never watched Scandal, um, the first two seasons of Scandal. I tried to watch it this season, couldn't get into it, I'm guessing, because I didn't see the first two seasons. However, what Scandal is to y'all is what Being Mary Jane and the haves and have nots is to me. Let's get it right. So let's just get into the video because as as I'm filming this, it's like 11.57 p.m., three more minutes till midnight. And my Being Mary Jane video is uploading. It has like 85 more minutes left till it finishes uploading. So let's just get into it while we can. The show starts off with the showdown between Candice, Amanda, Catherine, and Jim. Everybody who watches the haves and have nots knows that Amanda is a dumbass. She's slow as fuck. She don't know what the fuck going on. She don't even know that Candace ain't a real friend. Candace is trying to get you to talk to your parents about your trust fund so she can take your motherfucking money. But at the end of the day, I love Candace. I don't like Amanda and that's just what it is. And if Candace can con that bitch out of her money, let her do it. I, I'm just sorry. I'm just loving Candace. I'm loving Tika Sumter in that role. She's giving me the business. So... Candace and Amanda comes in the house as Catherine and Jim are arguing. And that's when it was this this it was so much shade, so much hilarious shit going on. Like everybody in the room knows what's going on except for Amanda's a dumbass. Like she can't even see that her dad was in up here fucking this girl who's pretending to be her friend who she's living with. Like it's pretty it's pretty funny to me how she don't even see that. The fact that um Um, Catherine kept calling Candy so many different names. Like she kept calling her chronological, or kept calling her number nine, or just nine. Period. You know what I'm saying? Like it was so motherfucking funny. Catherine kept trying to spill the tea, but Jim wouldn't let her spill the tea. Candace was basically challenging her to spill the tea, but can't. But but after Catherine would try to spill it again, Jim would tell Catherine to shut the hell up, and then. Amanda dumbass just standing there watching all of this shit unfold and she don't even see what's right in front of her. See, why it might be a fucking rage and crackhead that runs over black people, but at the end of the motherfucking day, he was way smarter than Amanda is. He caught that shit between Candace and Jim from the very beginning. He might be a damn crackhead, like I said, and he might run over black folks, but he knew what the fuck he was talking about. He knew what the fuck was going on between Candace and Jim. He knew that. He knew that before anybody. He caught on to it. He saw it from the very beginning. He ain't as dumb as we thought he was, okay? So then, we get into, um, I was just sitting up here like, cause you know, I was watching it with my mother. And my mother can't stand Candace. And she can't stand Candace to the point where she had to walk out the room and go take her smoke break. And smoke her Newport light break. You know what I'm saying? But this is all I'm saying. Candace and Jim no, nah, not Candace. Catherine and Jim are dumb as hell. Y'all know what Candace is about. Catherine, why didn't you just spill the tea right then and there? Like, you and your husband is allowing the wolf that is Candace to eat y'all daughter alive and y'all don't even see it. Like, y'all are giving y'all daughter out to the wolves. Y'all know that she naive. You know that she dumb as hell. And y'all giving her to the wolves. Like, I don't understand that, period. You know what I mean? I don't understand that, but, you know, that's just what it is, though. Like, they are giving their child to the wolf that is Candace. And there's no if ands, or buts about that situation. Candace want her money. They say she don't know how to manage no money. And then she served them with papers. This is just how much power Queen Candace has over this bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like... I usually don't like characters like this, but it's just the way that Tika Sumter is playing this role. You know what I mean? Like, she is playing this shit for filth, and I can't get enough of it. So, we get into the bitch that makes my ass, my entire ass itch, and that's Veronica. Her and David talk about the situation that's going on between, with Jeffrida, a.k.a. Jeffrey, whom I affectionately call Jeffrida. So... David wants to talk to Victoria about, not Victoria, Veronica about the fact about how she talked to Jeffrida when she found out that he was gay. And my thing about it is, Veronica is so fucking 
stone cold salty and cracker hard that she don't and so fucking cold hearted she is colder than the fucking weather in North Dakota you know what I'm saying like that bitch is very motherfucking hard and cold and shit like she just don't even give a fuck about her son just because he gay you know what I'm saying like I sat there and I looked at that TV and I said I wish Tracy would and I was talking about my mama I was like I wish Tracy fucking would treat me like that because of my motherfucking preference or orientation or whatever the fuck you want to call it as long as you don't call it a lifestyle because I do not like that term but for whatever reason I wish my mother would treat me like that Veronica is a dirty low down monkey with a nappy ass wig on like she is dirty and low down like I got some of her points when she said that the fact that she has a big she says that she's open minded but her actions is not showing that she's fucking open minded she looks like a damn southern fried ass bitch with that same fucking slave mentality and so fucking closed minded that she don't even see what the fuck is going on it's 2014 motherfucker the girls and the kids is all over the place get into it okay just get the fuck into it bitch you know what I'm saying so her thing is he already got to he already got to be in this in this area not area but be in the world as a black man but not only as a black man but as a gay black man and that is not gonna cause nothing but heartache and when she said that you know my mama nodded her head she understood what she was saying my mama agreed with what she was saying you know that's what most parents you know that's how most parents see things when their child first tell them that they're gay they automatically think about the fact that they are already a black man that's one strike you got against you but now you're a gay black man and you know how people treat black people gay people then you got two of the most two things that people look down on so much you know what i'm saying you already black people are already watching us and then you gay too you know what i'm saying like i get how parents feel i get why they are so protective over their gay kids because of that situation the gay bash and the racism all of that type of shit we get it but she's not coming across as a concerned mother at all about it like we get why you're afraid because he's a gay man and then he black we get why you we get your fears but at the same point in time you're being disrespectful you're being heartless and you acting like you don't love your own son just because he's gay like we get like i keep saying we get your concerns but you're not executing your concerns out the right fucking way bitch that's all i got to say about it and kudos to david for standing by his son standing by jeffrey like he's supposed to. So Candace and Amanda get home and they find Jeffrey outside their house. And he pretty much, um, Candace pretty much tells Amanda to go make them some tea. Just like Celine and Slave Nut are fucking maids for, Can for, for Catherine and Jim, Amanda is a motherfucking Slave Nut and Celine for fucking Candace. Let me just put that out there. But anyway, yeah, so. He tells Candace about how she treated him, how she said so many things to him, many bad things, got his credit cards, got him kicked out of his apartment, fired him, everything, the whole night, just because she said that he was gay. And he doesn't have anywhere to go. So Candace um, invited him to live with her and Amanda, which was a pretty sweet gesture. He needs somebody on his team, you know what I'm saying? Because of the simple fact, his mama really treated him like shit, and she wrong for this. So we get into Slave Nub at the hospital. And she meets another family that was impacted by the same accident dealing with Benny. We find out that this man um, has a drug addicted daughter and she is crying her motherfucking eyes out. Like we don't know what the fuck going on. I guess her baby got ran up by the car. And then when they finally, you know, then Slavina tells him that her son Benny was, in, was involved in a hit and run as well. So then when the pastor comes, they find out. They all put two and two together and realized that the same person that hit Benny is the same person that hit this this um this young girl's baby. So they're basically impacted by the same fucking accident. So we sit there and we get it together. And one of my friends was on Twitter tonight. He really had me took it. He was like, hell I don't know what the fuck going on. She was already on the heat of the night. She knew exactly what was going on. I hollered at the damn uh Twitter. I said, Oh Lord, my friend tells me this. But getting into uh, Candy, she tells Jeffrey the story about her gay cousin who was a transvestite or whatever. That was after um, Jeffrey to analyze Candace and read her for filth. He read her as he was giving her them queen reads. You hear what I'm saying? He was reading her, gave her a whole motherfucking, just analyzed her ass to the T. 
So she told him the story about her gay cousin, which was his name was Steve. He was a transvestite, and he showed basically showed her the ropes, and you know showed her the ropes about con the niggas, fool the niggas to get what she wanted, to get out the fucking hood, to get out the projects. He didn't show her the right things, but he showed her how she could survive, and that's where she learned her ways from. And um, Jeffrey was asking her what happened to him, and she said that he was found hung and his dick was cut off. So. That's when Jeffrey asked Candace, was she afraid of it? And she was like, I'm not, I don't fear anything. And I get, and, and you know what? It's, it's just really, I'm just loving to find out this backstory about Candace and why she's the way she is. I hope we get to find out who her baby daddy is, who her father is, and where's her child. Because I want to know all that. So we get into, back at the hospital, we find out that the girl baby... Is officially dead or whatnot, and they're all praying for Benny because he's in surgery. So we can move on from there. Catherine and Jim they argue again, and I must say that I am loving Catherine. Like she be reading Jim, and Jim needs to sit his old ass down somewhere because he really believes that a motherfucker still want him. Don't nobody want him but Candace, and Candace only want his ass. She was only using his ass to get where the fuck she needed, and she used his ass. He fell in love with her ass, and he be fucking the shit out of her. That's all I got to say about that. And just know that I can't fucking wait. Um, we just, I cannot fucking wait till next week because we gonna find out that the car that Wyatt was driving was Jeffrey the car. And it looks like Jim is gonna try to frame Jeffrey the for the shit that happened to Benny. I cannot wait to see this shit, y'all. The haves and the have not just giving me my motherfucking life. I must say that since the new year started, we've been getting some good TV. You know, we got the Real Housewives of Atlanta. We got the haves and have nots. We got Ben, Mary Jane. We got the Bad Girls Club. I'll start better because that first episode was the shit. Make sure y'all knock on J um, Jamar door, Jamar 84 door, and make him review it because I ain't reviewing shit while he trying to make me review it. Make sure y'all knock on his door. And say, Jamar, bitch, you better review Bad Girls Club All Stars because ain't nobody else gonna do it. Make sure y'all do that. Um, and what else come on? Single ladies, oh, oof, my TV is just, I be glued to the TV on Monday and Tuesdays. But that's all I got to say about the haves and the have nots. Um, I'll be back next week for another review on that. And I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.